welcome. Um, yeah, yeah, we do a little bit of everything from planning to cleaning to errands to shopping hauls to crying to crazy. Yeah, um, living life with autism, living life with uh, autoimmune, living life with just life. <laughs> Um, but yeah, hit that red subscribe button. We're glad to have you here and welcome to the net house <laughs> And her and that man I've got to have y'all She's got to tell y'all She's got to tell y'all Hi sweet girl. Oh, she's laying down still. She's cold this morning. Uh-oh. We're a little fuzzy Okay, there we go. You want to tell everybody about wrestling last night? It was cool. It was cool, huh? Did you have fun? Yep. Yeah. What part, what was your favorite part of wrestling? Uh, the whole thing. The whole thing. You and Daddy had fun, huh? Mm-hmm. Did you have popcorn and soda? Yep. Yeah, yeah. So, sweet girl had a good time. Sweet girl had a real good time. They did not get in till late. What time was it? Uh oh, what time was it when y'all came in, baby girl? Almost 11. Yeah, it was almost 11. I made her hat fall. She likes her little fedora. Okay. Alright, so you finish your nap. Like I said, it's nine. Yeah, it's nine. She had gotten up earlier and had her some breakfast. Um,. But it was about 11 when they got in, so that is super late for her. Usually she is in bed and asleep by 9.30, 10 o'clock. Um, but she gets up and down during the night. Um, she just does. Um, like I said, that's one reason he's trying to get in this window. So I'm going to open this window for you. There. There. He is like a little boy. Looking out. You can hop up here. Yesterday it was so funny. He hopped up there. The window wasn't open. He hopped up and he hit the glass. <laughs> I'm sorry. But it was hilarious. Anywho. She had a ball. That man whenever they got home. And bless his heart. He knew I had to kind of guide her in. <laughs> She was, she was sleepy, but she was so excited to tell us. She, that was the most she's ever talked. I mean, you see how she just kind of gives answers to everything. It's just real short. Honey, she talked and talked, and she told us who all had wrestled. She knew their names. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. She was just talking up a storm. Um, you could tell she was tired. But, yeah, buddy, we got a play-by-play, -play, <laughs> which was wonderful. Oh, it was so good to hear her talk so much. Um, I've got to whisper, kind of, because she's, like, right there. And I know if I whisper, y'all can't hear me. I'm so sorry. But, yeah, it was wonderful to hear her talk so much of just, yeah, yeah. And you could tell. By the way, she was talking. She had a ball. And that man had fun. He, he's like, that was fun. So, um, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to make it my bed while I run the pie hole. Like I said, I like to try to multitask as much as I can. Um, Y'all help me with my chores. You know, your chores. <laughs> chores. Um, but, yeah, so... But today holds other than the library. Library, and then we are going to have to have our little picnic lunch, which we always enjoy, as long as we aren't met by, yeah, uh, yeah. <clears throat> Scary folks. Um, yeah, every once in a while you'll have... Yeah, like winos or weirdos or, yeah, come up to you. Um, but anyhow, so we're going to take our sack lunch with us and eat. 
at the picnic table. It's a great day for it. It's beautiful outside. It's sunny. Yeah, the sun's shining. It's a little cool, but hopefully by this afternoon, that cat popped me on my butt. Hopefully <laughs> by this afternoon, it will warm up some. We're going to go do our crock pot meal for the day. Um, we are doing the crock pot meatloaf that I put in my freezer a while back. Back, I want to say like at the first of the month, when I, or toward the end of last month, when I did up all my hamburger meat. Um, and I made up those crock pot meatloaves. Um, so that's what's going in the crock pot today. But again, thank you to everyone for their kind words. Um, I'm going to do today. While Carol Beth is at art, um, I'm going to walk around the parking lot. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think I'm going to do my walking. Huh? That'll make me feel better. Um, I've been using every excuse in the book of why I have not started my exercise. And so... Excuses ain't getting me nowhere. Oh, I can't. Sorry. Excuses ain't getting me nowhere. So, um, let me turn that light off. We don't want a dark hallway. I'm trying not to support the power company's children's college fund. <laughs> um, that man did get my little cart I've had under my desk for three four months around Christmas time it was around Christmas time I bought my little cart at Aldi's and so he finally got that put together for me yesterday and I got all of Alice Marie's stuff put in it and it fit perfect between her pack and play and the wall it fit perfect and it holds her diapers and the wipes that we have here her books her toys and they're her extra clothes and her blankets yeah, yeah, it fit perfect. There it gets caught on the cap toy. Um, <laughs> real quick, but y'all know me, I can't do nothing quick. Um, like I said, yesterday I tried linking the uh, odd yearly chore thing from DonnaYoung.org to the planner video. And I was able to go in there. Y'all, it's the subscribe only now thing. This was years back. I mean, I printed this joker years back. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to go into a Word doc. I'm going to figure this out. I'm going to go into a Word doc, kind of make a version of it. I mean, I know due to copyright, I can't go exact. I've got the cat trying to walk across my laptop. No, you cannot help me. No, no. Um, I'm going to go into Word Doc and try to do like a version of it. I'm going to kind of re, I'll have to revamp it. I'll probably break it down by month, um, or quarters and do it that way. Um, but just kind of that way you'll have a, a example or a sample or I'll have to try to figure out how I can do that where you can print it. I don't know. I haven't gotten that tech savvy yet, I don't think. I'm so right now, a friend of mine had told me to get up with, and somehow or another, they had contacted her about trying to get me to get up with the Sparks Center. They are doing genetic research. Uh, they have actually found a gene. There's a chromosome that they have done. Now, we had genetic testing done on Carol Beth. Like I said, this might be an autism. Autism Monday. It's Carol Beth Monday day. There you go. Um, they have done genetic testing, and they have found one chromosome that actually is defective in a lot of autist, autistic children and adults. <laughs> Um, we did have genetic testing on Carol Beth when she was three and a half, four. Um, that was when we had a lot of her tests done. I mean, just big goop. Test after test after test. 
um, genetic testing was one to see if she had fragile X syndrome, which you got to figure 20 something years ago, autism wasn't as heard of as it is now. Now it's like one in 78. Back then it was one in 450. Do you see the difference? Um, because back Back then, they didn't know that there were so many variations of autism. I mean, just because you had this symptom, but you didn't have all these others, you weren't qualified as autistic. But now they know, you know, if you had these three, you could be qualified on the spectrum disorder. It's called pervasive developmental spectrum disorder. Yeah. I know big words, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to autism, I do. I do. I've done my research. We've been dealing with it for 20-something years. So, yeah, big mama knows. But we had genetic testing done. She did not have fragile X. They did not know what to look for back then, though, as far as the defective chromosome. When she was 11, we went to Tuscaloosa, and she was part of a social study. Um... And it was just how she communicated. They were more interested in the Asperger's um, portion of it. of Because she was verbal and she was older. Um, they were really interested in her feedback of how she would answer things. Um, but anywho, all that being said, the spark center. And I've got to do some research on it before I even remotely think about saying, yes, we will be part of your study. <clears throat> but they are very interested in Carol Beth because she is vocal. She is in her 20s. And so they are very, they have reached out to us of um, would we be willing to let her participate in the genetic test um, to see if she has the defective chromosome. Um, I am going to look into it, see if it just entails just a blood test for genetic testing, or if it's going to entail testing. Um, like I said, I've got to do some research into it first. There are several of y'all that have commented that you have autistic grandchildren or children let me know in the comment down below, have you heard of the Sparks Center? S-P-A-R-K-S. I'm going to look it up. That's what I'm getting ready to do now. I'm getting ready to get online. Um, I'm going to look it up. Y'all research it. See what you think. And then comment down below. And let me let me know what you think about it. Um, yeah. Uh, I'm fixing to get online and really look into it. It's almost 10. We'll have to leave here 11. Well, no, we'll need to leave here by 1030 in order to get her to the library. I don't even know if she's awake yet. She might be asleep. We might skip the library today and do that Wednesday. That might not be a bad idea. Wednesday, she's got to go for her pre, yeah, her pre up. Of course, our books are due today. Like I said, I know several of y'all have grandchildren or children with autism. Check out this Spark Center and comment down below of what you think. We're just going to call this one today of um, autism. Life, it, life in a family of autism. There you go. That's what today is. Okay. It's Spark Center is so many different things online. But I finally found it's www.centerforautismresearch.org slash spark. And I will leave a link for it down below in this vlog um, because there are so many different ones. Um link um hold on but 
I do want to screenshot and show you um, if I can get it to where it will do. We are enrolling any individual with autism spectrum disorder and their biological parents into the nation's largest autism study called SPARC. The goal of SPARC is to speed up autism research and find genetic causes of autism. All participants enroll online at, and it gives you the link, and then provide a saliva sample via kits that are mailed to the home. Families who return the saliva collection kits will receive compensation and access to free webinars and an interactive and informative dashboard. So, it's really simple on your part. It's really simple on your part. All you do is you send off for the saliva kits, you swab, you send it back. That is so simple. And if it would help, I mean, it might not help our kids. It might not even help grandkids. But if it helped families on down the line of preventing this or knowing, okay, this is what causes it. This is what we're looking for. This might need to be what we kind of, you know. I'm, I'm not one for playing God and adjusting genetic things. But if it would help determine, okay, this is what it's affecting. This is how we can reach the children. This is how we can interact with them. This is something that, you know, because a lot of, a lot of people, I know back then, it was deemed that it was something that the parent had done. You were a cold parent. I mean, back, back when Carol Beth was diagnosed, every book or everything that we had heard, it was, are you cold towards your child? Well, you're busy with, this was one thing they had told me, well, you're busy with that new baby that you've got, and so she feels neglected. What? Are you kidding me? Yes, I had three very close together, very close in age. I was extremely busy. I was frazzled. I was worn out. Some days I felt like I didn't have that one-on-one -on -one attention with each one, but I never, ever neglected any of them. And that just... And they, here they were with the white coats and the ND after their name, so they must know what they're talking about. And I cannot tell you how many times I left a doctor's office and just knew it was my fault because I didn't love her enough or I didn't hold her enough or I didn't do something right. Yes, ma'am. Um, and so if there is a genetic defect, that would make so many parents feel so not really validated, but you know, it's it's not your fault for lack of care. Does that make sense? It's nothing that you did or didn't do. Um, it's not the fact that you didn't spend time with them. It's not the fact that you did. So, and then some people flipped it the other way of you held her too much. Well, this guy over here said I didn't hold her enough <laughs> with the crab. <laughs> so, um, I'm going to look into this more. There's a flyer that you can get, a study flyer. I'm going to click on that. I will leave the link to all this information down below. And that way you can, you can read it, you can find out about it, you can make that own judgment for yourself. I still have not decided. I'm going to really, really research, think about it. Me and Fat Man are going to discuss it. Think about it. Um, we will even ask Carol Bass' opinion. Um, you know, this is this something that you would consider? Would you mind if Mom and Dad did this? Because they, they need your child, and they, they need both biological parents. And it, it might be a thing of, okay, 
both parents I, I don't know what they're looking for but it might be a thing I know a lot of genetic disease genetic diseases or disorders are where both parents are carriers and they have to both be carriers in order for the child to have it and that might be why a lot of siblings I know so many many families that if they've got a lot of children I know one, bless her heart, they have four boys, and all four boys are severely autistic. And so that would give that genetic link. She was thinking, she had been told, because hers were diagnosed the same time when ours were. Well, Beth, Carol Beth was. Hold on one moment. Okay, it was just confirming him, confirming my cardio appointment. Anyhow, where was I? I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember. Oh, anyway, yeah, bless her heart, all four of her children um, were diagnosed severely autistic. Yeah. Um, and they, it was at, I'm not going to say the, the developmental center that did all the testing. There was only one place in Montgomery and she had come from south of Mountain, like way south. They had traveled a long way. But you had to come to Montgomery to this one particular center to get the diagnosis, the actual diagnosis. That was the only place that did it. Um, with like seriously a good 100 mile radius. Yeah, yeah. Now this was back 1990. 495 yeah um yeah well no 96 95 96 anywho and they were the same people that told me you didn't love her enough you're taking care of that new baby and that's her problem what what and so they had this poor woman convinced that you haven't taken care of none of your four kids. And my heart just ached for her. Truly ached for her. And she was like me because you've got this white coat on and empty after your name. Evidently, you know what the crap you're talking about. Maybe I am a bad mom. Maybe I didn't love them enough. And oh, my heart just, I almost want to cry now thinking about it. Um, and when Carol Beth was a little bit older and we'd gone to the neurologist, I think I had told y'all about that before. And he had told us once she got six, we would need to institutionalize her. Um, and we did. We got to meet this woman during the course of years through um, autism classes and Easter seals and speech therapy and physical therapy and occupational therapy and um, they had actually moved to Montgomery so they could be closer to all of the services that were being offered and we kind of got to see her boys grow and change and develop and she got to see Carol Beth grow and change and develop and Three of hers remain severely autistic. Even to this day, they're severely autistic. They are nonverbal. Um, they still do a lot of the stimming, where it's like hand flapping or rocking. Um, one is Asperger's, which is the high functioning, which is like what Carol Beth is. She's considered Asperger's. Um, he can talk, he can carry on conversation, loves to read. And we both know now it wasn't our parenting. It was nothing that we did or didn't do. It had nothing to do whether we loved them too much or didn't love them enough. Or, yeah, no, no. Bunch of bull hockey. Um, so, yeah, I was very intrigued whenever they had sent me this information about the genetic study so i will leave the link down below it has a um like i said i clicked on the pdf of the study guide 
um, and now they've changed it. They have even lowered the number now. Last time I heard it was 1 in 78 kids are diagnosed with some form of autism or the spectrum disorder is pervasive developmental spectrum disorder. And that is a whole gambit of different autism levels. If you're familiar with autism, you know that no two kids are alike. They're different levels, they're different stages. Some might be verbal, some might not. Some might be verbal but have other delays, like cognitive delays. Um, some might never get bathroom trained. Some might. Um, yeah, just different. Now they have actually changed it to, oh my heavens, one in 40 kids. I did not know that it had been lowered. I thought it was still one in 78. One in 40 kids now will be diagnosed with some form of autism or the, the, uh, the pervasive development disorder. And it goes into like the social communication, interaction, repetitive movements or speech, intense focus. Um, yeah, I see Carol Beth had all of those. When she was little and diagnosed as severely autistic, she, uh-oh, going the wrong way. Um, she had the hand flapping, she had the pacing, she had the self-abusive behavior, she had lack of communication, she would not speak. Um, she would point, she would grunt, she would scream, uh, she would not look you in the eye. We've got lots of pictures where she's like, yeah, you know, looking off. Um, even now sometimes, if you're talking to her, she'll, you know, <laughs> um, especially if it's somebody she doesn't know. Or she feels uncomfortable. If she gets nervous, she'll do this. If she gets anxious or fiddle with her hair, she would do this a lot. When she had when she had long hair, she would pull it back. Up. She would, and even now, as the week goes on and it gets closer and closer to time to Friday, I'll try to vlog and kind of show, and you'll be able to see as the week progresses. She will probably do this more. Or fiddling with her hair more. We do have her, they've increased her Zoloft, which is used for obsessive compulsive disorder, which is a lot of the repetitive movements that um, autis autistic adults and children do, is the repetitive movements, the anxiety brings it on. Um, and so since they've increased it, we've noticed a dramatic change. She doesn't do it as often, um, last night we noticed she was doing it when they were getting ready to go to wrestling. And it was because she didn't know what to expect. She didn't know how big the place was. She didn't know how loud it was going to be. She didn't know where they were going to be seated. And we had pulled up a map of the Coliseum and showed her, okay, your seats are going to be right here and the ring is going to be here. And we tried to kind of um, we did that whenever we took her to the Shakespeare Festival, and she got to see Alice in Wonderland. Y'all, they gave us the best seats in the house. We called ahead of time and told them our situation. They had very comfortable, not really folding chairs, but yeah, I guess they were folding chairs, but they were padded. They were very comfy. They had put on an end aisle, almost like where wheelchairs would have gone. But they had put those three chairs for me, Becca, and Carol Beth in case we needed to get up and leave and step out in the hallway. And then we could come back without disturbing anybody in the row. Um, and it was wonderful. They wanted to know if it would bother her if the characters, if the actors used that path to go down to the stage. We were in the um, octagon stage. And so it was a very, very small, it was mainly for children. It was Alice in Wonderland. And the actors actually used our aisle, and we had Carol Beth on the end, 
And so the rabbit came running by. And Alice came running by. And the rabbit went back again. And he finally stopped. And he kind of looked at Carol Beth. And he asked her, have you seen her? Have you seen Alice? Where did she go? And Carol Beth is just... <laughs> it was wonderful. It didn't freak her out. She was enthralled. Of uh, and when we got, when we left, she was, Rabbit talked to me. Rabbit asked me if I had seen her. And sure enough, Carol Beth, <laughs> she's just kind of sitting there dumbfounded. And then she pointed the way that Alice had gone. Um, it was wonderful. Um, and so we tried preparing her for last night. But we could tell she was nervous. She was doing this a lot. of, And then Fat Man finally told her, Okay, Carol Beth, we're ready to go. You ready? Are you excited? And we... We tried to play it up. This is going to be good. It's a good thing. Um, but yeah, I had no clue that 1 in 40 now. Wow. Wow. And so if it is a genetic defect, that, like I said, from the research that I've read so far, this research, they have actually found one chromosome yeah, they are doing a 10-year study. They have done, this is the 10th anniversary, past, present, and future of the research. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, it's done through the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia, which is the largest autism research center in the United States. Um, I do know that much. Chicago, I know years back, um, what was his name? He was one of the top neurologists studying autism. Um, enroll in a study. I'm, I'm on, I'm still on the website. I'm hitting enroll in the study. Kind of, kind of, studies currently enrolling orbiting. No two people with autism are the same. Um, they're looking for children and adults with autism between the ages of 5 and 17 to join them. Um, Spark is we're rolling any individuals with autism and their biological parents. Goal of Spark is to speed up autism research and find the genetic causes of autism. Um, and then the virtual reality study. Teens and adults 12 and older with autism spectrum disorder to participate in our testing of the effect of this new virtual reality proved in improving social skills. Involves one to two, three visits to CAR to use the VR set set and complete questionnaires. Um, wow. Oh, they've got more. Understanding social and motor functioning. Um, infant brain development. Those are two to four year olds. Um, a lot of these you have to be like close to. I'm assuming unless your local children's hospitals would do it. Um, two to five, eight to twelve. Um, they're looking for boys and girls eight to twelve. Minimal verbally or, or nonverbal. So it's different studies that they are actually doing, but it is the Spark study that we had been told about. Um, yeah, and it's SparksForAutism.org, chop, and that's Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. Um, yeah, I have a touch screen. Sorry, um, I'm gonna touch on that. Okay. What does autism research need your DNA uh, about the study? They need 50,000 families needed. They only have 16,000 families enrolled. 
So they need a lot more families, y'all. And if all you got to do is do a saliva swab, um, largest genetic study, we believe that to find answers for you, we will understand what makes you unique and what connects you with others. Um... Nay cost to you. Keep your data private. Um, I know I had read somewhere. Check out the interactive map where you can zoom into a different areas of the country to see where spark registrants are coming from. Um, so you can actually see there's where all the different notice how there is a cluster of them in like the middle section of the United States isn't that weird isn't that odd the through here has a lack through there has a lack I wonder interactive map Okay, the darker the blue, let's see, let's pan out. The darker the blue, the more people. Okay, so it's not like there's a dot for every person. The dark blue represents 35,000 to 97,000. So, um, Alabama didn't have that many dots. Um, Trying to zoom. Maybe I have to click on it. Oh, there we go. I guess that's as close as it's going to get me. Um, there are only 19 participants in like the Auburn area. This is Alabama. There are 19 participants in the Auburn area. There are 24 participants like in the Dothan Panhandle. And then there are 13 participants like right at the Panhandle of Florida, Alabama line. So, yeah. I'm trying to actually click. It won't let me zoom in just to Alabama. So, yeah. There aren't that many, like for real. So, oh. Hey. There you go. Alright. So, um, I am going to do some more research. Like I said, I will leave the link to all this information down below. Um, and you determine for your family and yourself, you know, your own conclusion, whether you would be interested in being part of the study or not. Um, I'm going to talk to Fat Man about it. Um... But right now, my thought is, you know, what could it hurt? They're only even needing, they're only needing saliva swabs. Um, and if it would benefit the research, why not? I am going to look into if their research, if what their end goal, I want to know what their end goal is. If their end goal is to find out how to determine whether they have that chromosome defect or not, and that information would be used to try to encourage the parents to terminate the pregnancy, then no, I do not agree with that at all. Of course, I guess that's left up personally to the family. Now, when I was pregnant with Carol Beth, my um, 
one of my blood works came back. I was high in something. I don't even remember now what. And it was suggested that I had to am have I have an amniocentesis with her because there was a one in fifty two percent chance that she would be Down syndrome. Something blipped up in that blood work that she was probably Downs or fifty two percent chance of being Downs. So, we went to Birmingham to see about if, she, you know, the amniocentesis. I had no clue about the odds of what the amnio entailed. Um, I went knowing, I'm trying to shut my computer down for a sec. Okay, I shut it down. I went knowing with, no matter what this test shows, I'm having this baby. I just wanted to be prepared so between then and the time I had the baby, okay, what do we do? If she is, these are the things we need to do. These are the things we need to do to help her. That's what I wanted to know for. My mother tried telling me, now, if she, you know, if we didn't know she was a girl at the time. Let me rephrase. We did not know that she was a girl at the time. Well, if that baby is, you need to you need to think really think about getting rid of that baby. You need to terminate that baby. You don't need to. It's going to be a burden on you. It's just it's going to be awful for the baby. I mean, just you got to know my mother to understand. And I just was adamant about. I don't care. Whatever God blesses us with, it's a blessing. God will give us this baby whatever way he chooses for a reason. For a reason. Um, and my mother just did not see that. Anywho, we go to go get the amnia. And they're explaining to us about the odds of miscarrying were greater and higher than the odds of her it being a Downs baby. Okay? And I'm like, no. I am not doing this test then. If y'all would have told me that before I left home, I never would have drove the hour to get here for you to tell me this. Because it ain't happening, Jack. You are not doing this amnio and run, me run the risk of miscarrying this baby. I was... I want to say five months pregnant. Yeah, I was five, almost six months pregnant. I was, yes, yes, I was ending my second trimester. I was ending my second trimester, getting ready to go into my third trimester. So I was six months pregnant, getting ready to go into my seventh month. Yes, yeah, I was ending my, end of my second, getting ready to go into my third. Um, yeah, and I'm like, no, 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 no. And it was like right at the cutoff of where they could have done something um, at that time. And I'm like, no, I don't think so. No, Jack. And so they agreed to do an ultrasound. They had a, you got to think, this was 26 years ago. So technology has way changed. We didn't have 4D and 3D. Um, ultrasounds back then. Um, so they were able, and he's like, well, you know, we've got the technology of doing this ultrasound, and we'll really be able to pick up the features. And so at least we'll know if she, you know, it has the heart defects that are kind of common in um, Downs. We'll be able to pick up, you know, if the brain is, is deformed or malfunction in any kind of way. Um, maybe the eyes will, will be able to see um, the facial features, um, the head circumference, different things that they would look for in Downs. And so I'm like, okay, we can do the ultrasound. That's safe. And my mother is still, well, if it is, you need to you know, shut that up. 
and Brian was with us. And so she's holding Brian while they're doing the ultrasound. She's in the room. What possessed me to let her go with me, I do not know. I do not know. That was the last doctor's visit I think she ever went with me, other than when we took care of the dothan to our neurologist. Yeah. 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 Anywho, they're doing the scan, and Brian, all of a sudden, he's looking at the screen, and the ultrasound tech has been so sweet. He had sensed the thing between me and my mother, and he has been so kind and so sweet. He knows this is stressful enough, and then I got this bat. <laughs> Um, I'm trying to think a good Christian word, y'all. <laughs> uh, just being just, you know, I was already near about in tears. Um, of thinking, okay, you know, they're trying to talk me into miscarrying this baby. Or, you know, finding out. And, you know, and I finally told him, I said, it doesn't matter if she, if it is or isn't, I'm keeping this baby. So, no, it's not worth the risk of losing this baby to find out if it's down or not. Anywho, Brian looks at the screen and he's like, uh, turtle, it's a turtle. And the man's like, no, hon, this is more of a cheeseburger. And we're all like, what the crap is he talking about? I might have already discussed this whenever I did do Carol Beth's story. I might have already discussed this. I don't remember. I yammer on so much about so much. Um, but turtles are boys, cheeseburgers are girls because of the way the anatomy shows up on the screen. Well, then, honey, once my mother found out it was girl, honey, her tune changed just like that. Oh, it's a girl. It's a girl. I'm, I'm sitting there looking like, what the crap? Two seconds ago, you were trying to tell me to abort this baby, and now you're all excited that it's going to be a girl. And then that's when he's like, okay, you know what? We don't see any heart defects. We're looking at the head circumference. It's not really that alarming. Um, from the facial features of what we can tell, it's not that alarming. He said, now we can tell that she is big. Even when I was at that point, she was big. And I'm like, well, I could kind of tell you that. <laughs> I knew that from the way she was moving around. <laughs> huh, Y'all have done yammer dawn and yammer dawn. And time is, wait, or 1030. I think baby girl is still sleeping. Let me go check on this sweet girl. We might not go to art at all. Oh, wait, I hear a TV. Are you up? I yeah. thought you were still sleeping, sweet angel. Yeah. Oh, oh, she's watching eggs. Why are we watching eggs? It's actually a crafting. <gasps> oh, what are they doing with the egg? Oh, they're baking it. Oh, yum. Oh, they made a meringue. Oh. They made a meringue to put the egg in. Cool. All right. So what we might do, because it is 1030. Mm -hmm. um, did you still want to go to the library or no? We can go Wednesday. Uh, I still want to go to the library. To the A? Mm-hmm. Okay, you want to go today or you want to go Wednesday? Today. Okay, so then we need to kind of get a move on. Mm -hmm. So we need to come figure out what we're going to eat. I guess we'll eat before we go. Or do you want to eat once we kind of get that way? We'll eat once we kind of get toward that way. How about that? Good. Okay. All right. Um, so I guess I need to hush my pie hole. I am going to really have to edit this vlog, like for real. <laughs> I might have to make two vlogs today. I am not going to do my crock pot meatloaf until we will get back about four, four hours on high. Might have to tell one of the kids, because that would be eight o'clock. Two 
two to three, three to four, four to five, five to six. So if they put it on at two, it would be ready at six. Yeah. Can I come in? Yeah. All right. Hello. And I'm getting it on video. That way you can't say I didn't tell you. Um, at two o'clock, if you can put the meatloaf in the crock pot and put it on high, okay. I'll show you how. Um, yeah, we're going to delegate. We are delegating, people. Delegating. Delegating. What? All right, for the meatloaf, I'm going to get the boy to put it on in the crock pot at two while we're at art because it takes four hours on high. So, um, and then you just, I'm going to do the ketchup and brown sugar. We just like it better, the traditional meat love way. Every once in a while, barbecue sauce is good for a change. I'm just doing, I don't know, about a cup of ketchup and then probably two good tablespoons, like that much brown sugar. And I'm just going to kind of mix it because Brian had no clue. And I never really measure. I just kind of do um, for like the size meatloaf that I have. Um, yeah. I'm just going to kind of stir this together. I should have got a bigger container, but what are you going to do? I'm just going to kind of mix it. And that way, all he'll have to do is take it out of the freezer, the meat loaf out of the freezer, and pop it in the crock pot. And then pour this over the top and let it cook on high for four hours. And then when we get home, we'll get home from art about four. Um, The meatloaf will be ready at 6, so an instant potatoes take no time at all, and then we're going to do canned English beef, and that is going to be supper. So, I just went ahead and mixed that. I did take, I did taste the spoon. It's fine, it's just straight ketchup even with brown sugar but I wanted to make sure that I had enough brown sugar <laughs> Woo! I need water <laughs> so I'm gonna put this I might even take that meatloaf he knows it's in the freezer I'm gonna mark this for meatloaf yeah oh, okay. mm. <laughs> Hi, Miss Cindy. Thank you for the card and the gift card. Yes. I wish me luck, y'all, because I'm going to need it. <laughs> I was wrestling. Good. Yeah, she's already talked to him about wrestling. Yeah, we got some fun now. Miss Cindy from my world um, sent Sweet Baby Girl a wonderful card. And you, it made you happy, didn't it? Yes. And it said, praying for peace and strength for your upcoming surgery. You got this, baby girl. And that made her tickle whenever it said the baby girl part, didn't it? Yes. But it's got some wonderful Bible verses you need to look up. Isaiah 41.10 and 1 Peter 5.7 and Philippians 4, 6 and 7. We'll look those up, won't we, sweet girl? Yep. Yes. Yeah, we will. And then she sent her a $40 gift card that she can use anywhere she wants. Sweet. Yeah, sweet. Huh, sweet girl. Oh, no. Can you tell Miss Cindy thank you? Thank you, Miss Cindy. Awesome. What are you going to do with it, you think? I don't know. You don't know. It's going to be a while until I'm able to use it. <laughs> But thank you, Cindy. That is so sweet. Thank you so much. You did not have to do that. But baby girl was glad to get some happy mail. Happy mail. So, 
Yes, because thank you. Because we just got a letter. Yeah, we, we just, just got, got a letter. letter. We just got a letter. Wonder who it's from. Yeah, remember mailbox from Blues Clues? That's what Becca's singing. So, but I had a wonderful walk at our. If you have not seen my Instagram post, hop on over and see Instagram. I walked for a full hour, y'all. It was a slow walk, and I was cobbling like a horse. <laughs> Yeah, I was I was humping it like a Clydesdale down through there, y'all. <laughs> and Carol Beth, you had fun at art, didn't you, sweet girl? Yep, yeah, it's going a while until it go back. Got two weeks. We're thinking we're thinking about two weeks is what we're we're kinda looking at. So but it's all good. It's all good. Um I do not smell my supper. Oh, he did. Wonder when he put it in. But yes, this is what my crock pot's looking like. I left the boy in charge. Um, luckily, I just had that note, and I had mixed up that sauce. Y'all saw me mix up the sauce before I left. And this is what we're looking like. It should have been in there. If you put it in it too, like you were supposed to, it's been in there an hour and a half on high. And so, it's supposed to be done at five. So, two to three, three to four, four to five, five. Six, excuse me, it'll be done at six. So, yes, four hours. So, and he put it in there at, at two. Right? Yeah, six. <laughs> It'll be okay. <laughs> oh, and I made a note, pear honey recipe. So, on my Palm Pilot, I've got my note, pear honey. I'm looking. Um, I've got to dig through, dig through my recipes and find that. And, yeah. Yeah, so we're home. I have discussed with Carol Beth. Oh, can I plop it here? My legs are about to kill me from where I walked. Um, me and Carol Beth were talking while we had some time in the car um, before art. She loved the library. We went in the new children's section. Y'all, they had some comfy chairs up in there. Big Mama just sat down in a chair and let Carol Beth do her thing. I read a homeschooling magazine, which was fun. Um, it gave me some good ideas for her, even though we don't homeschool. Um, activity-wise. Yes, activity-wise of some things for her to do. So, um, and we try to implement that without her knowing that we're doing it. Yeah. Um, I like watching the documentaries and things like that. So, anywho, she enjoyed looking in the children's section and they had wonderful new chairs I'm loving on a kitty cat um I forgot where I was going with this oh we were discussing can you get the door baby can you go help her with that door I did explain to her and talk to her about the sparks study and so we're talking and discussing on that yeah, her cart's giving her a little hard time, isn't it, sweet girl? I just crammed so much stuff in it. I think that's what it is. Oh, uh, your thing? Yes. I was walking Foxy and I just, you know, let her do her thing. Look, her took off running to Miss Tippett's. I'm like, you better get over here. I'm so like, eh, she's still. Hey, how you doing? Hey, Star, hey, London. Took off to over here. <laughs> Look, you broke your hiding in here. So I'm toting her, walking Foxy. Gosh. Did you run off, Miss Joyce? Oh, yes. Oh, oh, goodness. Now she's dog shaming. Yeah, she's dog shaming. Anywho, um, I will still leave the link to that study down below. Um, and y'all discuss it and make your own decisions and choice. I'm gonna we're gonna research and talk to Fat Man about it and we'll research some more. Um we're not gonna make snap judgments. We're just gonna kinda and go from there and we'll let y'all know what we decide. So, um I think that's gonna kinda do it for this one because I have stretched it out. I'll probably clip out or show the meatloaf. I don't know, I don't know how to do this one. I'm trying to figure out how long this one is so far, but I did want to show the meat of. So, I guess we're not done. <laughs> Y'all see the meat loaf when we get ready to plate it up and have supper. Yeah. Oops. 
Okay. Hey, y'all. I'm trying to get you. There we go. <laughs> I'm leaning just a little bit, but that's all right. Um, what am I here for? I <laughs> Supper. Y'all, I wish I had smell -a vision <gasps> This meatloaf is smelling so stinking good. Look at that. Fogged up the camera. Hey, it's all fun and games till we fog her up, buttercup. Y'all, it smells divine. I mean, like, divine. Um... I just went in the pantry. I was going to do English peas, but I got to looking. I've got more of an overrun of green beans than I do English peas. So we're going to do green beans. Lots of butter added to it. Makes it good. Everything's butter, better with the stick of butter in it. Um, and then instead of salad tonight, I've got a ton of canned fruit. Different kinds of canned fruit. I've got pear you know, diced pears, pear halves, I've got peaches, I've got mandarin oranges, I've got fruit cocktail, in 100% juice, um, yeah, so tonight, just for something different, and to kind of go ahead and start hitting these cans, we're going to do fruit cocktail, I think everybody will like that, it'll be something different, I thought about doing some cornbread to go with this, but I don't think I'm going to. I don't think I'm going to. I think we're just going to stick with the instant mashed taters, the green beans, and the fruit cocktail, and the meatloaf. And that will be plenty. Um, yeah, yeah. The potato will count as our carb. So we don't need cornbread. Right? Yeah. I was going to do like fried hay cakes, but we're good. We're good. So, but I wish I could smell it. It smells amazing. And I literally just walked in the door from art. I've been sitting. I've been catching up on emails. I've been catching up on Instagram. Um, and it is now 5 o'clock. I want supper on the table at 6. Instant potatoes take no time. And then the green beans, all i got to do is open the can, drain them, put a stick of butter in I've got three cans. It's going to take three cans to do for my heathens. So I've got three cans of green beans and two cans of the fruit cocktail. I'm going to go ahead and get these open and get them in the refrigerator. We like it better cold. Don't you like fruit cocktail if it's better if it's cold? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So we're going to go ahead and get it chilled. And um, that's going to be supper. I'll show y'all what's when you all plate it up. Okay. I started my mashed potatoes and my green beans at 5 o'clock. It is now 522 and we are ready to plate and serve. Yeah. That's why I love instant taters. <laughs> yeah, now I love, I love real mashed taters. But if it's been a Monday... And we don't come scooching in the door till 4 and people are hungry at 5, 6 o'clock. Yeah. And my meatloaf got quick done quicker than 6. It's 5.30 now. Um, this is what it looks like after I've taken it out of the crock pot. You will have that grease in your crock pot. So I just always cut it in half. And I pull out half and then I pull out the other half with a spatula and I'll platter it and kind of let it sit for about five, ten minutes. I cut it in half to make sure that it's good done. It's not pink on the inside. It's not red on the inside. We're good. The juices are running clear. We are good. Um, my green beans are done. I just added a ton of butter to them. See, I drained off all the juice out of the can. This is just butter. Yeah, yeah, Big Mama likes to butter. The kids can tell a difference if I add a good bit of butter to them versus, yeah, back up, mm-hmm. And then here is, I'm going to go ahead and turn those off, and then here's the instant mashed potatoes. I did add a little bit of extra uh, fake butter to those than what it called for. And uh, then we'll have the um, fruit cocktail. Yes. We've got fruit cocktail. I'm going to put up here. If I can get the 
little bit of yeah and because we are having like the fruit cocktail and it's a little runny okay a lot runny oh I ain't got this spoon for it um, we are going to use our schoolhouse trays remember these from school y'all yeah I usually do these especially if we're having breakfast supper because grits go there it ain't funny games if you grits run off into your other stuff I'm just saying so grits go there so anytime we're doing breakfast supper the kids know pull these plates out <laughs> and Brian bless his heart he did unload dishes he loaded dishes yeah I had a sink full and he unloaded and loaded so yes um, but yeah, we're just going to use these because we got that fruit cocktail and it, it won't be good and I'll make them. And this is great for portion control, y'all. Seriously. Um, they know that their, their like fruit cocktail will go here, not here or here. Um, yeah, yeah. So, but that is going to be supper and that meat loaf, like I said, and my kitchen is not hot. I didn't have to heat up the oven. Um, Brian was able to dump it in. Um, and it's not like I was having to mix it up this morning or anything like that. So meatloaf is something that you think of that you're going to have to do on a day that you, you know, are going to be home all day. Or mm -mm, you can just take it straight out of the freezer, dump it in your crock pot, put your sauce on top. And I, like I said, y'all saw me mix some sauce up before I left the house. And I just put it in a container and told him what to do. Um, yeah, yeah. That man can even pull that one off if something happens. On okay, there's a freezer meal in there. Um, just get it, follow the directions on the card, and boom, there you go. So I always try to keep at least one or two meatloaves in there. One or two easy heat up and eat casseroles. Um, my broccoli chicken rice is one. Um, yeah, yeah. I have to look through my cookbook whenever I, would, I get ready to do my March meal plan. I will look through. And we might do um, almost like a freezer cook. Yeah, a big freezer cook day. Or, but if I'm going to do weekly, I can kind of do up. I know I've got these two hams in there, so that will be a definite um, for at least one time this month. Miss Pris, um, the only buy I know for sure I'm going to have to do in March. I mean, I know I'm going to have to buy other meats, probably. Ooh, it'd be a blessing if I didn't. <laughs> but I ain't going to buy a corned beef. We have to have corned beef and cabbage come St. Patrick's Day. Yes, yes. His mother was Irish. So, hence the red hair on his side. Yeah. And then, I'm sure, down the line somewhere. Mine was like a mixed melting pot. We was like strays at the pound. <laughs> yeah, we like strays at the pound. Shut up, Beck. <laughs> if you want to go call everybody, it's feeding pee time. <laughs> but, yeah. So this is how your crock pot meatloaf is going to come out. This is just where it kind of bubbled up. I don't like that. Yeah, I'll scrape that part off. That's just where the juices kind of bubbled up. Yeah. But, um, yeah. And if you want your sauce to brown a little bit more, you can take it out of the crock pot and put it on a um, cookie sheet or a small... You know, like a loom pan or whatever, and stick it under the broil for just a few minutes, and it will, um, it will, um, you know, caramelize on up. I am just going to take my spatula, and we are going to cut into sections. Fat man is not here yet. He, whoa, uh -oh. he is having to work late. So. We are just going to kind of cut. There we go. Like I said, you can do this with any meatloaf recipe. Um, just make up your meatloaf however you like it. And don't cook it. Just get it. Make sure it won't go beyond your crock pot. And then just ziplock it, bag it. 
freeze it and then take it out the day of um, you want it on high for four hours now right Becca <laughs> she went fleeing to the other room but yep that is supper on a Monday all right we will see y'all and put on those pearls put on that smile y'all be sweet right Carol BS yeah tell them said bye bye and said so we'll see you tomorrow see you tomorrow okay and y'all be sweet put on your bows even if they're crooked right mm -hmm. can you give mom a kiss Mwah. oh wait do it again she zerberted me mm -hmm. you like zerberting yeah show them how you get five just one thing <laughs> or she'll take her elbow because she can't touch her elbow. Yeah, she doesn't want to touch all the way. Mm -mm. Yeah, no, that's germy, isn't it, baby girl? Mm -hmm. So you either get the one finger or an elbow. There's boy. Hey, now I was bragging on you because you unloaded and loaded dishes. And you did the meatloaf, so you're the bomb. Wasn't for me. Y'all want me in. Yeah, ladies, see? He can cook, he can clean. He's single and ready to mingle. Well, you don't want to mingle. He wants to marry. He's single and ready to marry. Yeah. He's got curly hair like his mama. So he, he could make some curly-headed babies. Oh I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Curly-headed babies, ladies. Just saying. He comes with great benefits. He's got city retirement. <laughs> Blue Cross Blue Shield insurance. I'm trying to do your, qual your your selling points. He's in shape right now. <laughs> he's in shape. I don't know what shape, but he's in shape. See, this is where we know he was switched. Somewhere there's a skinny family with a fat boy. Yeah, but we've taken great care of your son. Hope you've done the same with ours. <laughs> so we're going to eat. Y'all be sweet. Bye, y'all. Okay, I do have to say kudos to it. <laughs> this thing hiding under the blankie. This Becca. <laughs> She adulted today, even though she's still in her jeans. She adulted. She did the dishes. She wiped the counters and the table. And all I told her was load the dishwasher. But she adulted and wiped down the counters and the table. <laughs> Dirt Lord is look, the Lord is just Brian showing up and me. showing out. Huh? Brian did more than Brian you. Brian did way more than you, but you did do something without being asked. So, woohoo! Yes, progress, baby, progress. I'll take it any way I can get it. Any way I can get it. I'm wondering what's coming, though, of why she's doing it. She's going to ask for something. <laughs> Is that what's going to happen? No. You're doing it because you're going to ask for something? No, I just feel bad. <laughs> All right. Or you well, did something. Yeah, or you did something. And Fat Man made it home. Hey, Fat Man. Hey, hon. All right, bye, Fat Man. Bye. <laughs> Y'all are just getting glimpses of him like we are. <laughs> but he's working. Do you get paid? Or you hadn't done the job yet? I'm probably working on it all week. It's a pretty good size job for me. So that means it's going to be a pretty good paycheck? Yeah. Awesome. Just don't work Friday. We're going to need you Friday. Right? Right. You cannot work Friday. Right? Right. I'm off Friday. I'm going to have to shank him. <laughs> <laughs> Boat paddle again. Well, get the boat paddle back to you. Uh -uh. Paddle that butt. <laughs> you know you liked it. You did like it. Uh -huh. <laughs> Bye, y'all. <laughs>